Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com. In this video we are going to look at five advanced pivot table techniques. So these techniques are going to include creating calculated fields, showing data as a percentage rather than a value and slices to name just three. If you check out the description of this video it lists what the five tips are and also at what time in the video they occur so you can use that to skip to what you want to view or to view again if necessary otherwise let's get on with our first okay now in our first tip we are going to look at how we can group the fields of a pivot table by month and year so you can group any numerical field in the pivot table but grouping information by date and time intervals is easily the most common practice. So what I'm looking at doing here is I want to, in this pivot table, bring the order date field into my rows area along with sales rep. So I can see myself doing it over on the right hand side here and you can see the order dates appear. I can then right mouse click on one of the cells that contain a date and choose group. This would then ask how would you like to group the field and because it recognizes it as a date provides date options and you've got some time settings in here as well. Now I'm going to select months and years as well. I want to select them both and click OK and as easy as that our information is now grouped by months and years. So you can see my year header I've got 2010 August, there's my total amount, breakdown by sales rep in that month. There's September, breakdown by sales rep in that month. And I've managed to group my pivot table both by months and years. Okay, now the next tip is going to be how you can display the value as a percentage of the total. So these sales values we've got here, showing the total by each sales rep, I want to know what that figure is as a percentage of the total. Now in this version of Excel, we can do this by simply right clicking on one of the values and going to show values as. And you've got these different ways of calculating the values in here. Um, to keep this compatible with older versions of Excel, what we might click on instead for this demonstration is value field settings. This will take us a few extra steps, but it will take us to this dialog box where we can choose a different function, which you may well already be familiar with, but also the tab for show values as, where we can then choose a type of calculation. And in this example, I'm going for a percentage of column total, but there are others that you can investigate. And if I click OK, the value is displayed as a percentage of its total. So we can see now that Margaret Peacock sold nearly a fifth of the total sales on her own. And a tenth of them came from Laura and so on. Right, now for the next tip, we are going to look at slices. Now Slicer was introduced with Excel 2010. So it's a relatively new feature that provides a visual way of filtering a pivot table. And its greatest strength is that it can be used to filter multiple pivot tables. So I've got two pivot tables on my screen, one showing sales by sales rep, the other showing sales by country. And if I click on my first table and go to the Analyze tab under Pivot Table Tools, and insert slicer. This will ask you which field you want to use for a slicer. And I'm going to use the product category and click OK. And here we have a slicer for the product category. What this means is that if I click on a category within a slicer, it, if you can see, is filtering the first pivot table. And it visually allows me to identify what filter is in play at a glance, nice and easy, with confections highlighted in blue there. 
I can select multiple categories by holding down the control key. So I could apply three categories if I want. And I can use the X in the corner to clear any filters. Now to connect it to the other table, so that this one filter will filter multiple tables with one click, I need to click on the Options tab under Slicer Tools. So click on the slicer first if you need to. Options, Report Connections over on the left here. And I can choose the other pivot tables in my workbook. They don't need to be on the same sheet. You can see it referencing a sheet here. And I could have named the tables to make it maybe easier to reference from here. But they would all be listed. You choose the tables you want to connect this slicer to. And if I click OK, when I apply filters now, I can see it's filtering both lists. So a very powerful tool slices, nice and visual, but their biggest strength is that they can be connected to multiple tables and they can be used to filter multiple pivot tables with just one click. Okay, now for this tip, we're going to look at creating a calculated field for your pivot tables. So we know that we've got these different fields of our table and we know that we can apply different aggregate functions like sum and count and we saw the percentage tip earlier for different values to display. But if you want to write your own formulas on a pivot table, you have the potential to create your own calculated field that you can then use within a pivot table like we do the other fields or similar to the way we do the other fields. So for this example, what I want to do is I want to find out what 25% of the sales values is. And I'm imagining that I want to do that because that's a tax savings that needs to be put away. So to do this, we click on the, well, first of all, we click on one of the values in the table. We then click on the Analyze tab under Pivot Table Tools on the ribbon. If you're on Excel 2007 or 2010, it will be the Options tab. That's what it will be called. And we then click on Fields, Items and Sets over to the right hand side, which is where we find the calculated field. So I'll give that a click and we see a dialog box where we can now write our calculation. Now the name of this field I'm going to call Tax and then we need our formula. So the equal sign is in there. My first step is to locate and insert the total sales value field from the pivot table because that's what has the value that I want. And I will then multiply that value by 0.25 to find out what 25% of that value is. I can then click OK, which will both add or both create that field, but also add it to my table. And you can see now on the right hand side, I have this tax field available for me. It's in my pivot table at the moment, but I can use that as I see fit within my table from now on because I have actually created an additional field manually. And it's a calculated field. It produces a formula. In this example, find out 25% of the total sales value, which is in a column to its left in this example. Okay, now to the final tip where we can look at applying conditional formatting to a pivot table. So conditional formatting is one of the best tools in Excel. Fantastic for visualizing data, you know, comparisons, trends, and whatnot. Great news is you can apply conditional formatting to pivot table values as well. And we can do this in the same way. So what I can do is I can highlight the values within my pivot table here, click on my home tab and conditional formatting. And I was going to apply some data bars in this example. I was just going to apply these green kind of gradient fills here. Should I go for a solid fill? Let's go for a solid fill. I've changed my mind mid tip. I'll give that a click. And as easy as that, I've got some data bars applied to my pivot table data. So now I can easily have a nice visual clue as to how the values compare rather than me having to stare at a bunch of numbers.